This is Andy Poirot for Boxing Social in association with Betfred and for the first time in almost two years. I'm joined by Larry Wade, the SNC coach to the stars in the boxing world uh, here in Miami. Larry, how are you? Man, you know what? I'm amazing. I'm here with Badu Jack. You know, we were here to fight for a world title. Unfortunately, that's not happening this time. We, we lost our opponent. Uh, and Gene Pascal, but I'm great because Badu has done amazing this camp. He's in great shape physically, mentally, and emotionally. Uh, a lot of changes that were being made by Coach Banks have been really positive, and, and I'm excited about that. So I'm looking forward to this fight coming up. Larry, there's one obvious starting point for this interview that's with regards to the John Pascal fallout and the situation with regards to him testing positive for four different substances. Right. Just what was your initial reaction to finding out the news? Firstly, if it was free, and then we found out yesterday, I believe, that there was a fourth one. Well, you know, initially, you have to understand, I was with Badu for the first Pascal fight. And um, after he lost that fight, but of course, he was extremely disappointed. And, and if anybody's a true champion or a true fighter, losses don't come easy because you put so much time into it. So mentally, he was checked out for a minute because he was so disappointed because we all thought he won, including him. And so I was with him from that point all the way until now, mentally, emotionally, helping him build to this point. And so he's put a lot of time and effort into getting an opportunity to right his wrong against Pascal. So when he, we found out about it, Badu was extremely disappointed and uh, very frustrated because once you spend 18 months just to get back to one person, one situation, it becomes frustrating. And on top of that, he was trying to move up to cruiserweight. And so he's, he's held back on his cruiserweight you know, pursuit in order to come and right this one wrong. So not for that not to be given to him. Yeah, it's disappointing. But at the same time, you know, I'm not going to sit here and, and say I wasn't disappointed as well. What I am going to say is whatever that Pascal has put a situation he put himself into, he's going to have to, you know, work through that. And I want to see Badu, and that's what my focus is at, Badu get what he wants now, get this fight out the way, get that win, and then go to Cruiserweight and become world champions again. As an SNC coach, Larry, I'd imagine you might know a bit more about what was used by John Pascal. Can you just tell everybody about what those substances he got uh, tested positive for would have done to enhance his performance? Well, I can't tell you about all of them because I don't know them all. I just know they came up. The most recent one I know the most, which was they spoke about EPO and the testing of EPO. I don't know about any of the other ones as far as off the top of my head, but I do know what the results of EPO are supposed to do for you and that is increase your red blood cells, which also allow oxygen transfer. And also, see what I got to deal with? Look you at sure this. sure about that, Larry? <laughs> I'm positive about that. <laughs> see, this is what I have to deal with every day, everyone, just so y'all know, right? And so, <laughs> but, but if you have more red blood cells, it allows the oxygen to transfer better, which allows you to recover faster, will allow you to fight longer. So that's, in theory, what it's supposed to do. And uh, once again, it's unfortunate, but... Pascal has a journey of his own now. You know, he has a lot of things he's going to have to endure. So, you know, I'm not going to spend this time bashing him. I just want him to be able to figure that out for himself. People talk about what could be next for Bardu. He's a very big 175 fighter. Do you see him sticking around in that way? Or as you mentioned earlier, he wanted to have that Pascal fight when he's looking at moving up to Cruiser. Do you think he still has it in him to compete for a world title at 175 now against one of the other titleists? Or... Will it most realistically be him moving up to Cruiser, provided Sunday goes to plan? Well, I can see Badu doing anything he wants to do. He doesn't have a problem making 175. He made he he was he was ready to make weight a week ago. You know, we were just holding off. So the, that's not the issue. The issue is Badu wants to do things that most people don't, and that was to be a legend in the sport and challenge himself at every level. He's already won a title at Super Middle. He's already won a title Light Heavy. He's like, why not win a title at Cruiser? Let me show the world I can fight at Cruiser and win a world title. So it's not a matter of can he do it or will he do it. If he decides to stay at 175 and get a title, sure. But the way I feel like Badu's at mentally right now, He's, he's beyond that now. He don't want to do it anymore. He'd rather just go cruiser, win a title there, and show the way, and try to really concrete or cement his name in the legend book, and he deserves that. Moving forward, Sean Porter, the man who initially got us into contact with each other. Yes. How is Sean? I spoke to him a few weeks ago. I haven't had a chance to see him since. Sean's great. You know, he's uh, mentally preparing himself. He may, ha uh, may have a fight coming up here soon. Um, I'll allow for people to announce that when that time is time to announce that. Uh, but he's, he's great. I just went to his house a week ago. 
uh, right before I left here, actually, and got a chance to spend time with him and the family. So he's in good spirits. He's in a good place, and he's training right now. What do you see being next for Sean? I know he said that he's got something in the pipeline which you don't want to announce, but is he good? how soon do you feel he will be till he gets another crack at the world scene? Because he's spoken openly about his desires to become a three-time world champion. Well, you know what? Here's the reality. And somebody may get mad because I said this, but Sean's not going to have a, a, a good opportunity as far as instantly just because the people are afraid to fight him. You know, people at, who have those titles don't want to get in front of Sean Porter. They realize that fight's a very hard fight. You get in front of Sean Porter, it doesn't matter if you're Bud Crawford, if you're Errol Spence, as he's already shown Errol, or, or Manny Pacquiao, or anyone else. You get in front of Sean Porter, you better be ready to have the fight of your life. And he's going to bring that every time, like you guys have seen in every single fight. So um, the, uh, he, he will get an opportunity. Some people's hands may get forced in order for that to happen. But people aren't calling Sean's name out. They don't want to see Sean. And if I'm them, I'm not trying to get into that uh, Tasmanian devil fight either. Because I know he's going to bring everything that day. And most people don't want that kind of fight. Larry, you also mentioned to me, obviously, working with um, Julian Williams now. How's that been going? It's been going great. You know, J-Rock and I have a relationship. We were in camp prior to uh, during the COVID time. Unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to have the fight. And so now he's having a fight, and uh, he, he called me in, asked me if I can help him. And I'm like, sure, I'm here for him. He's a great person, one of the hardest workers I know. And so far, camp is going well. I'm looking forward to my first opportunity or my first crack, you know, working with him for the future camp. All right, Larry, just a final word. Headline fight this, Saturday, this Sunday, rather. I keep saying Saturday, Sunday. Uh, Floyd Mayweather, Logan Paul. What are your thoughts on it? It's going to be a great fight, man. I think that it's going to be very entertaining. I think that uh, Floyd being the smaller fighter, people are going to think there's a chance for Logan Paul to win. I personally don't think there's a chance for him to win. I mean, but I think it'll be entertaining. You know, I'm going to be here with some of my other fighters. I know I talked to Caleb Plant today, and he said, well, the other day he's coming and he's flying in for the fight. So um, I get a chance to see those guys do their thing and be with some of my uh, fighters here too as well. What is the latest with Caleb and with regards to that Canelo fight? Well, if Caleb is able to get that fight, he definitely wants that fight. Caleb has wanted that fight for a few years now. You know, so if Canelo pulls, the, I guess, the trigger on it, he'll be in front of him. But when he, when he don't realize, he can be in front of a different man altogether. Caleb is different than anyone else he's put in front of him. And our whole team believes that he's going to give Canelo problems. All right, Larry, we'll leave up there now because I think the rest of the team have left you. Yes, they have, <laughs> they have. But I'm glad that you stopped me. I'm glad I had the opportunity to talk to you because it wouldn't have been right for me to go through all these other interviews and not talk to you. Thank you for your time. Right, so I appreciate it. It's the way around. I appreciate you stopping to speak to me. But like I say, enjoy the rest of your day, this beautiful thank weather, you. and thank you for speaking to Boxing Social. Thank you so much.